Hey guys! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this is pretty good. Um, I expected that I might not hit my target, but here it is noon, and the baby is fast asleep. So we're live and we're ready for part two of our spinning adventure. If you couldn't join me yesterday, I just talked about my equipment and my plan to spin a two ply yarn where one single is from this yarn right here, or this fiber that I dyed by dip dyeing a crocheted roving into Wilton's Violet. And the other single I'm gonna make using this um, speckled roving that I created by dabbling with little drops of um, dye and you can see how the Wilton's Violet split um, into the two colors and the videos on how I dyed each of these rovings are already on the channel so if you want to dye some fiber like this yourself um, you can do that but now let's uh, turn this camera around and let's get ready to start spinning. Aha. Now, hopefully, I will be able to see everything, except you'll no longer see my face, but I think that that will be okay. Um, oh, I'm glad I'm gonna inspire you to spin. Yeah, come spin with me. We can have like a, a nice little party. Um, so I haven't quite decided which one of these rovings I should start spinning yet. So while I get the wheel set up, do you guys have a preference for starting with the speckled roving or the dip dyed roving? Um, let me know if you have a vote, otherwise I'll pick one randomly and I am going to get my wheel um, set up. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. Yeah, this should be like a nice little lunch time party. So since I think I want to spin a thinner mm -hmm. fiber, I am going to change out the whorl. Um, I said that I had these two, uh, no, wrong camera, <laughs> two, there we go, two small ones yesterday. And I think I'm going to use either the um, 10 to 1 or 14 to 1 ratio. Um, versus the two that came with the wheel. So I am just going to quickly pop this off. And slide this other one on. <laughs> Gotta get the peg lined up. It's a, do I have it backwards? Maybe. There we go. See if there's resistance then. All right, it should be fine. All right, I think I'm gonna start on the slower 10 to one and then if I need some more speed, I can always um, pick that up. Oh, so Bo wanted to know what the different whorls do. So this right here is the drive band and it goes around the wheel and then around the whorl and so when when you treadle the wheel, and this is a double treadle wheel, this is a Kromsky Fantasia spinning wheel, the smaller the radius of the whorl, the faster you will spin, the faster you will get the spinning up here for the yarn. And so if you wanna make a thinner yarn, you want to get more twist per inch, and so having it spin faster is better. But it's really like, I guess, a preference um, for the spinner. And so, you know, at this speed I'm treadling, um, oh, I guess it'll be easier for you to see once I have um, all this back together. This right here, this piece of like twine is the brake band that will allow some uptake. And all right, so now, now you should be able to see. So on the slower whirl right now, just treadling at a slow speed. Um, this You can see that this is spinning pretty fast, but if I move to the faster one, and going at the slow speed, it's going even faster because each time this wheel goes does one loop, it'll do 14 loops up here. And so that's the difference. I love this wheel so, so much. 
Okay, dip dye, awesome. Yeah, we'll do the dip dyed one first because this one is a lot of fun. So I'm going to undo my crochet. Yes, bigger is slower, or bigger gives fewer twists. Yeah, bigger is slower and smaller is faster. So my, um, so I can show the comparison of, this is the slowest two whirls and this is the fastest. And so I'm using a medium um, one. This does 18 um, to one and 20 to one. And I think this is five to one and eight to one. Um, but I'd have to look that up because I don't remember. But this is the one that came with the wheel. Um, yeah, it it takes some like time to wrap around, but yeah. And then, all right, I already have a leader on my bobbin. Um, these, it's just some blend that I've had on <laughs> forever. Um, oh man, it's been a while since I've used the wheel, so I'm a little nervous. Oh, I'm glad you like my dress. I am really excited by this floral pattern, and purple's my favorite color, so I wear a lot, and I didn't necessarily think about what I was going to wear today, but yeah. Um, and so, as I said last night, I think that I want to do this getting some stripes of color with this one, so instead of doing, you know, spinning from, oh, definitely want to take my ring off. Instead of spinning, just starting at one end and slowly working my way to the other, I really want to um, divide the fiber. And some of these might be, you know, it won't necessarily be stripes, but. Doo, doo, doo. And so this base was the full circle roving, which is discontinued um, from Knit Picks. It was a recycled, oh, this is dividing thicker. It was a recycled fiber and so they used um, ends of merino, fine highland, and the Peruvian highland wool to create some yarn in this roving. Um, and so they had it for a few years and I really liked it. Um, yeah, so I've got a, okay, medium piece here. Maybe I will just go ahead and divide the rest of this fiber while I'm thinking about it. So then um, I can be ready to go. And I don't exactly have a plan for the yarn that I'm gonna make this time. Um, it's more, I'm hoping to let the yarn speak to me and the yardage that I get uh, will help. But I, I don't know if, uh, it depends on how fast it goes, if I'll do everything on camera or just, you know, a reasonable, certainly all the like highlight steps all come on. Um, I don't want you guys to miss anything. I do wish that you could kind of see my face, but that would mean that I'd have to film vertically and I have like an inversion to doing that. So I can't, I can't do it. Um, all right, so I've now divided this roving into, I guess like five different sections. Um, and then I plan to spin along the length of each of them. And this time I am going to spin Z direction singles, which means I'll be twisting the wheel clockwise as I'm spinning. And then when I apply it, I'm gonna do an S plied yarn. And so then I will be spinning counterclockwise. Um, a way to keep like, to remember which way is which is that if you look at a Z and you look at the direction of like when you start to write a Z, that your like finger kind of goes in a clockwise direction, whereas an S you start going counterclockwise. And so that helps um, you remember the nomenclature. Um, but I want to get, I have no idea where my, I want to get some twist onto the leader. Yeah, because this was, since the leader was a uh, 
initially applied yarn. Um, I want I'm just getting a bunch of twist in it so that way it kind of, there we go, travels back in kind of the opposite direction. All right. And now, whew, are you guys ready? <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna start, start spinning and let's see. All right. So I'm getting some nice thin singles. I think, I'm not sure if I over twist, like when I, Oh, you can barely see this um, <laughs> over here. This is why I frequently film over my shoulder. But so it does twist back on itself when it stops, but um, a lot of the twist comes out when you, when you ply it. So I'm stuck. Oh, down here. So I have, I had some problems with some squeaking. And so I like, it was a little loose and they'd slip around and kind of bother me. So I used some yarn to just kind of keep things, uh oh, to keep things in place. But yeah, so not, it's not yarn, it's intent, the yarn is intentionally stuck. And I guess this is called a footman. Um, yeah, all right, oh no. See, this is the problem with pausing, can I? So like, I've never been able to do a really long draft. Some people can do like a really, really long draft and it just hasn't really worked for me. <laughs> um, maybe, whoop, cause the fibers are too short or I'm not as good at letting the twists um, come up. Uh -oh. All right, see this is the problem with these smaller whorls is that this dry band keeps slipping off. Eek. All right. There we go. I haven't done a really thin yarn in a while. I've been doing a lot of like chunkier ones to make some like fun baby hats. So this is going to take some getting used to, but I can always slow down my treadling even more. And if I felt like this was going too fast, I could swap back to the larger whorl, so that way it would spin slower. You can spin a really thin yarn using a big whorl, um, but you know it just depends on like how quickly you move. But I wish oh, this is so pretty. I wish you guys could see a little better um the colors that because we've got these really pretty twists from the hand dried fiber um yeah i've i've never the shorter draft is really <laughs> like what i've always done i i watch these videos of these amazing people getting this like thread um and they're spinning it with such this long draft and i've just never had that much control um over the fibers. But each yarn or like different fibers are also differently and I'll like some uh, blends and wools are harder for me to spin really thin. And so that's why when like sometimes I say like, oh I let the the yarn speak to me, that's what I'm talking about. Oh. So how do I spin even chunky yarn? Um, well, so to get a thicker yarn, um, I have a, oh gosh, what do they call it? There's, I, so I have an attachment, um, and I'm totally blanking on what it's called. I'll have to look it up and I'll um, add the link in later. Um, there's, an, I have a bit, an adapter so that way I can, um, for like these hooks and stuff, to have a thicker yarn. And I use the, the slowest whirl, and sometimes I have to kind of fight to get it through so it's not very even. 
Um, but there might be different wheels that are like different wheels have recommendations for like you know their best to to spin this type of yarn and that type of yarn, and so. I'm not sure if there's something better for like really chunky. I think, you know, like getting, when I say a chunkier yarn, I'm talking about like singles that are um, heavy worsted weight. Um, thicker than that would be pretty hard. So then when I ply it, it's even thicker. Yeah, the, the attachment um, wasn't very expensive. Um, it has like a, I think like a, it has something that connects on right here, so then you feed the yarn through some place that has a little more space, and then there are like, different hooks that you can put on up here. Long draw all comes down to proper fiber prep and practice. Carded fiber is better than combed top. Interesting. Yeah, my, my knowledge on different mm -hmm. fiber preparations um, aren't great. I have some a hand, some hand carters that I got and I was all excited to like, ooh, let's blend my own fibers and create like my own custom blend. Um, especially because we've been saving fur from my dog since he was a puppy. Um, and he's a white fluffy American Eskimo and his fur is so soft. So we've been saving like clean brushings, but the staple length is pretty short. So I'd want to blend it with something. But man, I cannot really figure out how to use the hand carters. All I really managed to do was I succeeded in, um, oh, I need to move. Um, move this. I succeeded in carding the back of my hand and <laughs> making myself bleed. <laughs> but just like with spinning and with crochet, it took me a, a false start to, you know, I tried to learn and I couldn't get it working. Um, with crochet, it was a tension issue, and I think that I was having a big drafting issue the first time I tried spinning. I couldn't really figure out how to draft the fibers, because I think, well, the wool that came with my drop spindle was not good quality wool, and so it was really hard to draft, and I think that that was the problem. Um, oh, too much pull. Yeah, so... It, it just, maybe if I pick up and watch some more videos on how to card, I can try that. A drum carter is something that is super attractive to me, but I don't really have a couple hundred dollars to spend on the tool. I should make this tighter again. You have a blend, oh, I've seen blending boards. Yeah, I haven't really tried spinning roll ads before. Most of, I guess this is, you know, combed. Uh, I'm not, my fiber prep terminology, it's something that I'm very much a novice about. But I do like being able to hand dye, and I love spinning hand dyed. Uh, fibers because you, I think you get some really interesting color patterns. Yeah, drum carters also take up a lot of space, I think, is the other problem. Um, I don't have, you know, the wheel I can pick up and move around, but the drum carter you need a table space and, yeah, already I have way more fiber to spin then I'll probably get to in too much time but what's funny is there was a year that I made a rule for myself that everything I made had to be done with stash and the only fiber I could purchase was either for a specific project um, for, uh, as a gift for someone um, or for you know if I wanted to buy new yarn for myself I had to buy fiber and spin it myself that went great but then that was the year I got pregnant with my first and there were a lot of specific baby things I needed to make. So for a while, you know, my stash did not increase, but it's a bit out of control right now. Okay, I'm done with the end of the first section. Mm. I never thought about using the 
Well, we ha- you mostly use a comb with Indy versus a brush. Um, so using that as a carter. I mean, I feel like some of it I could almost just spin like as a jumbled mess, but it still needs something longer and curlier. It's very fluffy, but uh, not. Yeah, I don't. I think it would be hard to spin on its own. The, I have spun some dog fur before that someone gave me like a bag with a bunch of different mixtures of fibers and the um, the dog spun up pretty easily but I think that the staple length was longer than Indies. Yeah, probably a lot of people's stashes are out of control. I have some friends who are like really good at using up all the excess yarn that comes in. But I have one of those um, Ikea, I think they're now called Calax units. It's four by four. And there's also yarn in other bags and other spots around my house. So, uh, yeah. And a lot of this has moved across the country and back with me. And so, yeah. Yeah, so I feel bad sometimes because people ask, you know, can you share like what you've made out of this yarn or that yarn that I dyed? And, you know, the I dye way more yarn than I have time to knit with. Um, but I am a lot, I guess, more likely to get to the rovings, but I think that's because I have spun um, fewer, or I've dyed less roving than I've dyed yarn. Yeah, those, the Calax units are pretty fantastic. So we, I have the four by four that, all right, I also have some like my, my Vogue knitting stash of magazines and some of my books are in there too. But I have one for yarn storage and I have, we have a two by four in our mud room that we use for like gardening stuff and shoes. And then in the bottom of our, we only have like really one accessible closet on the first floor and so in our coat closet we have one across the floor to put kids shoes hat winter hats and to like keep bags a little more organized on the floor and so it fit almost perfectly in the bottom of the closet i had to <laughs> install it in there <laughs> or install it i had to um build it in there which was a little difficult <laughs> um to get some of those screws in You need eight of those four by four things. Yeah, I mean, I could use a few more. I just don't know where where they would go. I don't have space for them anymore. <laughs> oh. But my youngest is about to start school. Um, the my my son's school goes from eighteen months um, up, and so my eldest who is three and a half, and my youngest will be at the same school three days a week, which means I'm gonna have a lot more time for dyeing and other cabinets type stuff. Hi! Morning. Um, yeah, the, and then I mentioned last night, this weekend, I am gonna have a weekend all to myself because my husband's taking the kids, um, on a little trip and I'm staying home just because I am getting a little staycation and I can do whatever I want for a whole weekend. So I'm very, very excited. Um, I haven't been away. I don't think I've been away from the youngest overnight yet. Um, so it'll be nice, but he kept, Keith kept telling me I needed to go away or like I should go away for a weekend, but I realized that what I wanted was not to go away, but to have a weekend here so I could like actually spread out and work on a big project. Um, and I think I'm going to finally do um, a quilt for my oldest, or at least like try to get the top done. I made a quilt for my youngest um, that I finished, I guess about a, a little over a year ago is when I finished it. Um, but I haven't had, with a mobile baby, having cutting and spreading out a, this will be a twin size quilt, 
I don't have a lot of space. Wow, Denmark. You guys are tuning in from all over. Uh, yeek. All right. Huh. You're filling up this bobbin nicely. Uh. But I'm excited to mix these longer stripes of blue and pink with the, the dotted speckled roving. I think that that should be really fun. Wow, in Texas, um, I imagine that it's really hot there. If I'm glad that we have air conditioning, but in we have central air here. In my previous apartment where I first had my wheel, um, we did have a window unit, but it was so hot and sticky that it got somewhat unbearable to spin and knit um, in the summertime. And we've got England. Oh, it's so cool. Our, Try to keep this in. Ooh, I've got a really nice little gradient going on over here right now. If you guys can see. Oh. <laughs> There's like, I've, so someone last night said that I should do a time lapse. And so I am filming this in HD on my DSLR, um, which hopefully one of these days I can figure out how to. Um, connect and use as a webcam so I can like increase the quality a bit or then like zoom in which I can't easily do from my phone um, but I should at the end I'll do set some like little time lapse to music of the bobbin filling up so but I haven't really been Yes, is anyone here from Massachusetts? I haven't been to any fiber fairs since I moved back. There were a few in Illinois. We had Vogue Knitting, um, Vogue Knitting Live in Chicago that I went to twice, and that was a lot of fun. And then there was um, Stitches Midwest, which was um, further west from Evanston, where I lived, but we still did that. Uh, two or three times, I think. Um, but I haven't been up on like the local fiber scene. And so I know that Vogue Knitting goes live in, um, yay, some in Massachusetts, woo! Uh, PJ, I have to like squint. I've got my computer in front so I can read your comments. Um, I know Vogue Knitting Live goes in New York so they don't come up Boston um, so yeah it would be nice to like start going to some festivals again um, I love just like well that's how I found this wheel I was at a festival and um, in one of the booths they had one and they were letting people try and so uh oh um, this camera turned off let me see Hold on one sec, guys. What did it? Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, but some someday it might be nice to go to. Vogue knitting, the Vogue knitting live in New York, but that would be pretty expensive. Because uh, I would need, I'd probably, oh well, I'll just leave that. I'll probably need a hotel, um, and so that adds a lot. When I went to the one in Chicago, I had the conference fee. I think it took four classes and did two lectures, which was really fun, but. Um, and then I got a ton of books, um, cause I had a huge voguenitting.com credit, um, from going to the conference. But then we had, 
Yeah, I just had the, you know, the L card. Oh, Tammy, you're so welcome. Um, I, you know, if I, I, I try to respond to comments when I see them. Sometimes I totally miss them, but I like to try mm -hmm. to help out as much as I can. If, you know, you can't get in contact with me, Ravelry um, is usually a good way to reach me because I get those messages sent to my email. Um, and sometimes I just, there's a lot of comments on YouTube and so I can lose track. Um, but contacting me through Facebook usually gets to me um, pretty quickly as well. And yeah, I don't mind helping you guys troubleshoot. It's kind of fun and it oftentimes inspires me to try new videos and to try out new things. I love comments, suggestions, um, even, you know, criticisms. Uh, I don't always love those, but sometimes they're really helpful and constructive and can help me improve um, what I'm doing. So, yeah, I appreciate, I always appreciate feedback. It was on Messenger. Yeah. Um, yeah, Facebook Messenger is a good way um, to reach out to me to see pictures. Um, I've had, on, I, I think I'm uh, on Ravelry on Chemnitz blog. Um, and I have people reach out to me there sometimes, which is pretty fun. Oh, I need to move. Oh, I, when, whenever I get like tagged on Instagram or messages from you guys that you're dying um, and you were inspired by my videos, it makes me so happy because like the, the whole, my whole evolution to here has been really fun and it's like, I really like just playing around in the kitchen with yarn and fiber and trying, seeing different ways I can get fun um, techniques on yarn and the response that you guys have given me inspire me to keep going and seeing like okay what else can I push what else can I do what else can I make um, yeah I mean once you start dyeing it you know it's the nice thing with dyeing with food coloring is it's really inexpensive to get started because you don't need separate equipment um, you just and it's stuff you can find at the grocery store so it's really easy to find and just play around with. And then if you want to, I guess, go down the rabbit hole, you can keep um, going and looking for other supplies and, and whatnot. Um, you know, it's my pleasure to provide uh, inspiration. So this whole journey started um, with dying because I made a sampler afghan and it was 20 squares, but at one point, I thought that I might do 30 squares. I was doing this afghan because I wanted to learn how to do cables, and it turned out cabling was a lot easier than I had anticipated. Um, and so I had all this 20% wool, fisherman's weight yarn left over, um, and I wanted to dye it, and so I started looking and seeing, and I found that I, you could dye it with Kool-Aid. And so I started experimenting and attempting to dye this 20% wool, 80% acrylic with Kool-Aid in my kitchen. And it was a lot of fun. And so ever since then, I've been dyeing yarn. Um, and a lot of times I try things for the first time in my videos, because if I'm going to make a mistake, I want you guys to see it and then maybe we can learn from any mistakes together. Um, am I a professional chemist? I am not currently working in the chemistry field. Um, I do have a PhD in biochemistry and I started the blog when I was in, in grad school. And so, yeah, we were, um, it was New Year's and we were at a cabin and I don't really ski and everyone else went skiing and I was home by myself and wanted to like, you know, key. actually I was looking for lists of ear flap hat knitting patterns. And this was before I was on Ravelry. And so I was making this list and I was like, gee, I wish this was online somewhere and someone had just done this already. And I was like, well, maybe I should just put this list that I'm making online. 
And so I started the blog, Chemnitz, and here I am nine, almost nine years later. So, yeah, and the blog has really inspired me to try new techniques and to learn new things and to experiment with different techniques and fibers and it's really inspired me to try to learn new things so that way I can share it and it's I've always been writing primarily for me so that way I can replicate things so but the fact that other people enjoy it is awesome and so it makes it fun to keep going but my the last few years it's been harder for me to do as much because well with two young kids um, there's a, usually a lot of noise around this house and with the the noise and chaos um, it's hard to have space to film and yeah just I don't have as much time to knit right now um, as I'd like and so I've been sewing a bit more because it's easier to keep that away from destructive toddlers. Uh, my three-year-old knows you don't touch mommy's wheel and he knows you don't touch her knitting but the one-year-old uh, doesn't really understand um, yet and so and my three-year-old has actually made an appearance here on the channel a couple times um, and so he wants to do some more dyeing with me and he likes to play Chemnitz video, <laughs> which I think is adorable. Oh, if you don't know about my blog, um, the, my website is Chemnitz.com. So, um, and there should... I guess there's not a link in this video yet, but there's usually a link in most of the videos on the channel in the description. I know people often don't look at YouTube descriptions, but I still try to, um, especially because my videos are long, I usually will put in the description kind of like a, a table of contents, so that way if you want to skip to a particular point in the video, um, you can without too much trouble. No worries. I can't believe I wasn't saying Chemnitz.com. Chemnitz.com. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, and I'm Chemnitz on Instagram. And I think I'm Chemnitz blog on Twitter. I also have the handle at Chemnitz, but I use at Chemnitz blog. And um, you can also find I'm on Pinterest. Um, sometimes if... If you follow me on Pinterest, you might get a sense of what I'm working on at that moment because of all the things I'm pinning. Um, I'm doing a lot of Disney stuff right now because we're going to Disney World in between Christmas and New Year's, and so I'm very excited and I'm making a bunch of stuff for me and the kids to wear. And, you know, my parents and husband and stuff too. Uh, but, you know, the summer is coming to an end, which means I need to start thinking about winter hats for this year. Um, the baby could rewear something that his brother had, but Lucas, his small, he's been wearing actually the same hat for the last three years. And I made them each hats last year um, as part of their Halloween costumes that they wore all winter, but they need new new ones for this winter. Oh, well, I guess the fox hooded cowl that I made for Luke would fit this winter. Um, if he needs a hat, he can take to school. And so I'll need to whip something up really quickly. He wants an elephant hat, but that doesn't seem very practical for um, wearing, because if I was gonna put any kind of ears on it, those might. I'm not sure how to do an elephant hat without it looking like a mouse. Um, oh, I should have moved that a bit ago. Okay. So whenever I'm changing fiber and I have to step away, I always wrap, um, around up here a couple times. So that way, 
when part unravels, it doesn't travel back. But man, we've gone through, I guess we're three fifths of the way through this fiber right now. That's not bad. I, for, I always forget how fast spinning can go. Um, much faster than knitting, which is good because then people wouldn't spin their own yarn. Oh, awesome! I'm so glad that you just dyed your own, your own fiber. Um, that is so cool that you like did socks from start to finish. Um, I personally, I'm not a big sock knitter because, um, well, I don't like wearing socks just in general. And so, but I love so many sock patterns that they're very tempting to do. I guess I've done a lot of knit stockings for like Christmas stockings and those are essentially big socks, but usually you're only making one of those at a time. I do enjoy mittens a lot and especially like detailed color work mittens, but then lace shawls, man, I haven't had time. Uh, before I got pregnant um, with my first, there was a year where I think I did 13 shawls in like 2013 or maybe I did, I definitely did 12 in 2012 and I, so I gave like as, Christmas gifts. I gave lace, hand knit lace shawls to so many people. It was pretty awesome, but I do not have that kind of time now. <laughs> I think I gave uh, homemade pickles that I grew and made last year. Um, so still something from, in addition to other gifts, but something from the heart, just not quite as time consuming. Yeah, 12. Um, there's a, a group in Ravelry that was, I guess they did like nine in 2009, 10, then 11, then 12. And then they changed the name to 12 Shawls Forever. So I was mentally prepared to do 13 in 2013. Um, but then it was gonna be just 12. Cause I guess, you know, at some point the number of shawls becomes a little ridiculous. Um, yeah, I like to try to do homemade touches when I can. And just like I plan to try to make my kids Halloween costumes as long as I can, um, as long as they'll let me, just because my mom made a lot of mine as a kid, and I enjoy the creativity. And I think Lucas wants to be an elephant. Everything's elephant right now. Um, yeah, 12 scarves. Yeah, I did, I did scarves. One year I did scarves for everyone. It's been really fun to see, like, how the gifts... I've made evolve um, but yeah it there have been so many babies so of our cohort um, Lucas was one of the first and so there have been so many babies that I've been creating for that one of them I haven't made her little baby whoopee yet and I, I feel so bad because she's she'll be one in November and I haven't cast on for her little blankie. Um, and in this group, there's six adults and now six kids. And so um, I guess I, I've made eight whoobies so far. Five and three, yes. Wait, did I make one for, I made one for that kid, yeah. Yeah, I've made eight so far, so this will be the ninth. And then maybe we're done with babies. For, everyone's done with babies for a while. Oh, wait, no, I've, have I done more than eight? Because there's my kids. Oh, no, I included my kids in there. Yeah, I, I made kind of a decision to only do baby blankets for um, the closest uh, family friends. And I, I do a lot of hats. Um, because I like fun, like little crochet animal hats. They don't take very long to make, but they're very unique and clearly handmade. And so people, and they make good stuffed animal costumes for after the kid outgrows them. Um, at, uh, the preschool my kids go to I made 
the decision that I will only be giving hats to um, my kids' teachers who have babies and their classmates who have new little siblings because um, we always do like a dinner um, for new families or for families that just have kids. And so you know whenever, whenever there's a new baby and I was like, I just can't do everyone. Um, but I figured that that was a nice way to limit it so that way if uh, I don't want anyone's feelings to get hurt if they don't get a handmade hat. It's like, it's not because I don't like you, you know, we love your family, but uh, uh, yeah, but I, I do like making baby things. Oh, that's a nice idea. I haven't looked at a lot of elephant hat patterns. I do have a crochet elephant head applique that I made, which is flat. And so I think I might cheat a little bit and put that on um, and put that decal onto a hat. So it is an elephant hat. It's just not like the fox hat and stuff that he's had. Um, and so, but I think for an elephant costume, I, like, I would take a hooded sweatshirt and put some huge felt ears onto it and then maybe make some kind of trunk headband or something. Um, I'm not sure where this little elephant obsession has come from. I think m most recently he wanted a Lion King, which he calls the, the guy from the Lion Guard Simba. Um, we've never seen that show, but he wants a Lion King and elephant party. Um, thanks. I'm glad that you like this fiber. Um, oh, thanks for stopping by. And actually, I might have to dash off too because it sounds like my baby just woke up and he is not feeling very happy about that. So I am going to need to wrap this up. I think I got about almost 50 minutes of spinning in. That's awesome. That was a nice, good session. And so of this first dip dyed fiber, this is all that's left. I've got, I initially divided it up into five pieces. I've got one and a half left. So we were able to do um, a lot today. And I will wait and I think come continue this the next time I am able to go live let me yeah so thank you guys so much for joining me um, I'm sorry that I am rapidly needing to cut this short but um, I need to go get the baby um, and I had so much fun if I missed a question or comment uh, I'm really sorry I was trying to keep track of all of them but um, that I wish I could make them a little bigger so I could see. But I hope that you liked this great, um, or this first spin along. Ooh, congratulations. What did I miss? Good luck, Tammy. <gasps> Ooh, congrats, Tammy's daughter is in labor. Congratulations, best of luck to her and that's amazing. Um, I had to go and like scroll up so I could see what people were, were talking about. Yeah, so thank you for joining me. Um, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. My website is www.chemnitz.com. And you know, and you know my YouTube channel because you are on it. And I hopefully will be back maybe sometime this weekend and we will do a bit more spinning. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.